U.S. Marine has been defined as a soldier of the sea, an elite warrior, a sheepdog protecting the flock against ever-lurking wolves. For 231 years, the Marine Corps has upheld a rich heritage of tradition, unique from her sister services, which has been handed down from generation to generation. This evening, you'll experience Marines in historic uniforms dating back to the birth of our great nation. As we draw near to our recent history, you will see living memorials duplicating those found in our nation's capital or foreshadowing those that someday may exist. Join us now as we witness the United States Marine Corps in every clime and place. started in a tavern, Tun Tavern. On November 10th, 1775, the Continental Congress resolved that two battalions of Marines be raised and commissioned Captain Samuel Nicholas as the first leader of Marines. The Marines' first major operation, an amphibious assault on New Providence Island in the Bahamas. The early morning reverberated with the thunder of Marines attack. Captain Nicholas and 268 Marines captured two British forts, tons of shot, shell, and cannon, and the British governor before returning to sea. The Barbary states of North Africa had plundered seaborne commerce for centuries. These lawless pirates demanded tribute money, seized ships, held crews for ransom, or sold them into slavery. To combat these outrages, the U.S. sent a naval squadron to the Mediterranean. In 1805, Lieutenant Presley O'Bannon led six Marines and a ragtag bunch of local militia across 600 miles of desert from Egypt to Tripoli. O'Bannon attacked and captured the fort at Derna, and for his heroic actions, was offered the personal sword of a sultan. To commemorate the raid on the shores of Tripoli, the Mameluk sword continues to be used by Marine officers today. In the War of 1812, Marines defended their youthful nation in numerous battles at land and sea. In Blatonsburg, Maryland, on the outskirts of Washington, D.C., armed with nothing more than their muskets and a single 18-pound cannon, the Marines stood fast with a handful of sailors against the British Army after the local militia had fled. Their courageous delaying actions slowed the British assault on our nation's capital by two hours allowing the presidential family to escape from the newly built White House. As a sign of respect, when a British Marine officer was ordered to burn the remainder of the city, he left Marine Barracks 8th and I untouched. In 1847, during the Mexican War, the U.S. Army was pinned down outside Chapultepec by fierce artillery fire. Impatient with the delay, Marine Captain George Terrett led 67 Marines in a flanking assault around the Mexicans and became the first Americans to enter Mexico City. When General Winfield Scott rode into the hollowed Halls of Montezuma, the Army's commanding general found the streets were already guarded by United States Marines. In 1917, across wheat fields and over German barbed wire, a new generation of Marines earned its baptism by fire in places like Bellow Wood, Soissons, Mont Blanc, and the Argonne Forest. Marines of the 5th and 6th Regiments charged through an onslaught of German machine gun and artillery fire into Bellow Wood, suffering more casualties in the first day than in the Corps' entire 143-year history. At one point, the two-time Medal of Honor recipient, Gunnery Sergeant Dan Daly, raised his rifle over his head and urged his men, come on, you sons of bitches, do you want to live forever? Astounded German soldiers were said to say that the ever-advancing Marines fought like Tufelhunden, or dogs of the devil. Thus, the name Devil Dog was born. Unlike the Army, whose medical personnel are supplied from its own ranks, the Navy supplies the corpsmen to the Marines fighting on the ground. It's a relationship that was galvanized by fierce fighting since the Corps' landing on Guantanamo Bay during the Spanish-American War in 1898. 
In World War II, the Navy corpsmen hit the beach with leathernecks in every battle of the Pacific. A common description of the corpsmen during the Vietnam War was a long-haired, bearded sailor who would go through the very gates of hell to tend to a wounded Marine. No matter how deadly the situation, a Marine can always count on Doc. When the call sounds, corpsmen up. December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. On this date and for the next four years, the Marines of World War II would add to our legacy hellish campaigns in such places as Guadalcanal, Tarawa, Bougainville, Inuitok, Saipan, Tinian, Peleliu, and Okinawa. And on Iwo Jima, 100,000 men would fight for 36 days. More Medals of Honor would be awarded for this campaign than in any other battle in U.S. history. Iwo Jima marked the only battle in our history where Marines suffered more casualties than the enemy. Nearly 26,000 Marines were wounded or killed. Admiral Chester Nimitz proclaimed, among the Americans who fought on Iwo, uncommon valor was a common virtue. On just the fourth day of the operation, five Marines and a Navy corpsman raised a flag on Mount Saribachi that told the Japanese their end was near. These common American boys raised a flag and gave the Corps a new symbol of valor and gave America a new symbol of the Corps. Korea, 1950. General Douglas MacArthur picks the 1st Marine Division to land at Incheon and trap the North Korean Army. A captured North Korean major said, panic sweeps my men when they're facing the American Marines. Months later, in temperatures of minus 25 degrees below zero, the press reports that the division's been trapped at the Chosen Reservoir. Colonel Chesty Puller replies, so they've got us surrounded. Good. Now we can fire in any direction. The advancing Chinese communists outnumber the Marines five to one, but in one of the most remarkable feats in military history, the frostbitten and beleaguered Marines fought their way back through wave after wave of ambushes to the 38th parallel. Major General Oliver P. Smith scoffs at a journalist. Retreat hell. We're just advancing in a different direction.
Vietnam. Marine aviation and ground units established new standards of excellence in close air support. Medevac pilots and their crews mean life to many of our wounded. Marines wrote new pages in the history of our Corps in places like Da Nang, Con Tien, The Rock Pile, Khe San, and Wei. This history was written from thousands of small patrolling actions, where our young enlisted Marines demonstrated the leadership and bravery which has ever characterized our Corps. The reputation of honor, courage, and commitment that we Marines enjoy today was directly handed to us and laid upon our shoulders by the tremendous sacrifices of these Marines in Vietnam. And to the veterans with us here tonight, we say thank you. Desert Shield, Desert Storm. General Schwarzkopf picks the Marines to breach the minefields and clear Kuwait of the Iraqi army. Marine air tears apart the Iraqis in kill boxes like the Ice Tray and the Highway of Death. The 1st and 2nd Marine Divisions cross the berm and destroy the enemy, freeing the country in only 100 hours. The Marine Air Ground Team once again proves itself to be the expeditionary force of choice as the nation's 911 call is answered by the core. And I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the U.S. Trade Center destroyed. The Pentagon severely damaged. Thousands of innocent lives lost. But American heroes step out of the ashes. Firefighters, police, the Port Authority, and everyday citizens. In their effort to save lives, New York fighter fighters ran into buildings which were doomed to total destruction. Their brothers and sisters removed the debris from the aftermath and faithfully recover their dead and our fellow Americans. George Orwell once said, people sleep peacefully in their beds at night only because rough men stand ready to do violence on their behalf. Something had to be done. The Marines took it from there. Operation Enduring Freedom. President George Bush declares war on terrorism and Marine Expeditionary Units quickly converge in the Indian Ocean and Arabian Sea. Just 40 days after the terrorist attacks, the U.S. launches airstrikes in Afghanistan. Marine Hornets and Harriers engage the Taliban who mistakenly seek cover in the dead of night, while troops on the ground capture Kandahar 
and raise the very flag that flew over the World Trade Center on the day of the attacks. Operation Iraqi Freedom. Just 48 hours after the President's ultimatum to Saddam Hussein, the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force delivers a shock and awe wave by launching simultaneous air and ground attacks. In only 21 days, the 1st Marine Division's battle tanks and armored vehicles fight through 350 miles of hostile desert along the Euphrates River to liberate Baghdad. The commanding general of 1st Marine Division, Major General James Mattis, states it clearly, no better friend, no worse enemy than a U.S. Marine. With last week's four-year anniversary of Iraq's liberation and the coming troop surge to support the Iraqi security forces, it becomes abundantly clear that this is going to be a long war. In his State of the Union address this January, our president reminded us that every success against the terrorist is a reminder of the shoreless ambitions of this enemy. The evil that inspired and rejoiced in 9-11 is still at work in the world. And so long as that's the case, America is still a nation at war. Ladies and gentlemen, the Marine Corps stands ready.